Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to our first fully virtual Hogan Lovells Africa Forum, the seventh in our series, and one in which we focus on sustainable development and growth on the Africa continent. My name is Andrew Skipper, and I head the Africa practice at Hogan Lovells, and I'll be your host today. Uh, this is a first and somewhat intimidating experience for me with the glories of technology, allowing us to be present globally rather than simply in the glory which is Merchant Taylor's Hall in the City of London, our previous venue where we have met and networked before. The circumstances are challenging, but they have given us the opportunity to reach out to a much wider global audience with a group of speakers, panelists and commentators with an extraordinary breadth of experience and wisdom. I will introduce these and highlight some instructions as to how to operate this system during the course of the day in as seamless a way as some of, someone of my generation can. The year, of course, began in a mood of optimism for Africa. I remember sitting in the Af UK Africa Investment Summit in London as Boris Johnson confidently proposed the UK as the investor of choice for Africa. Shortly afterwards, I was delighted to be asked to be a member of the UK government's Africa Investors Group, focusing on delivering support for more investment. And we're very honoured today to have our opening welcome delivered by James Dudridge, MP, the Minister for Africa for the UK government. At the same time across the world, President Macron, via Fellow Shrine, and Chancellor Merkel had been promoting major Africa funds and investment programmes. President Putin had welcomed a vast array of African leaders to Sochi. China was continuing full tilt with its Belt and Road policy. Japan were to hold TICAD 7, and America were rebranding OPIC as DFC, and are more focused on the continent, and in fact are probably the biggest investors in the continent in any event. And then, of course, we had the signing of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, a potential game changer in delivering intra-Africa trade, allowing scale and giving more opportunity to add value in Africa, for Africa, all supported, supported by dynamic multilaterals like Afrexim, whose president and CEO, CEO Dr. Arama addressed this forum last year, Africa Development Bank, and of course, AFC, from whose president and CEO, Samela Zubaira, Zubairu, we will hear today. And we as a firm had our best year yet in Africa, critically in mutual partnership with our fantastic network of law firms from our Go Far Together program, many of whom are on the line today. And I think I'd almost managed to forget the Rugby World Cup. And then, of course, COVID. And we all had to recalibrate our business, our economies and our lives. So I'm speaking to you from sunny Portugal, with a certificate of positive antibodies by my side. I've spent so much time on the continent in the last few years that my first priority has been to ensure that I and our practice remain present in absentia, as business and relationships have to keep going and we can't afford short-term disruption to interfere with long to interfere with long-term priorities. We've done this in a number of ways, including this forum and regular calls with our Go Far Together friends. But one part of this was my decision to engage with a group of my senior friends with enormous Africa experience in politics, business, commentary and culture and create a series of podcasts, which some of you may have heard. Other than testing a new career, this has given me a tremendous insight into the current and future situation on the ground. And I wanted to share some of my learnings very briefly. In essence, there's a consensus that COVID has shone a light on and acted as a catalyst for a range of structural fault lines which need addressing both globally and regionally. In Africa's case, the list is long and unsurprising, with sovereign debt potentially dominating and inhibiting growth and investment, failing commodity prices, falling commodity prices, crushing fiscal revenues in key countries, infrastructure investment put at risk by a necessary focus on healthcare and related sectors, and increasing disruption of the food supply chain. All this exacerbated by lockdown, locusts, climatic events, and increasing challenges in areas like the Sahel and northern Zo Mozambique from insurgencies. And again, all this in the context of fundamental democratic changes, which should see Africa driving global economies on the one hand, but risk civil unrest on the other. And as our speakers will say, it's clear that you can't do everything and that priorities have to be decided upon and that these are really difficult. Lockdown in a country where 80% of the people are paid by the day is very different to lockdown in Switzerland. We all know the difficulties, but first, are they worse than elsewhere in the world? And secondly, whilst no doubt it faces terrible challenges, does Africa actually have a renewed opportunity to shine in this disrupted context? The African Union has recently demanded a new paradigm. This model shows Africa rebranded, as Lucy Quist was saying in one of my earlier podcasts, and others 
such as Rakesh Wahi, who we'll hear from later, of CNBC, are determined to address in a realistic and positive light. It has Africa's debt rebalanced, if not written off, and Africa creating value for Africa in Africa, rather than exporting its natural resources for others to create margin. It has an Africa using tech to educate and generate a smart and enormous workforce, delivering growth and taking its place alongside, if not in place of, China in the global supply chain. And it has an Africa recognize the importance of gender diversity and youth, which I know is core to the message of a number of our guests, and focusing on sustainable and long-term development, which will allow generations to thrive in Africa and around the world. At Hogan Lovells, we consider Africa an integral driver of our global practice. And as many of you know, we base our business on the four pillars of understanding who we work with and where we work, investing on the continent, operating on the ground, and respecting those we work with and the cultures and countries we work in. This is a constant work in progress and helps to ensure we develop our business in mutual partnership throughout the continent and with the right level of context. We've challenged ourselves with forums like today and throughout our practice from day one to work better and understand better, and we'll continue to do so, in particular in the light of the current issues we all face individually as a firm and as a global society. Our commitment to engaging with the continent as we do with many of you and with our network is key to being a relevant part of that discussion. We want to listen and learn, and the excellence of today's lineup will challenge us all to understand and act better. I look forward to sharing the day with you and learning more. As I say, this is new to me, so I'm afraid I do need to give you a few housekeeping notes. First, uh, we recommended you log in by Google Chrome, because I gather that makes it much better. And do be prepared to be asked to log in occasionally using your login and password details during the day. It's an annoying but security feature, so keep your details at hand. We've set up the site in a way you'll be able to choose between various pop-ups at the end of our sessions to go to the next session. So please be patient when the system asks you to add your name. It's just so we know who you are. You can ask questions through the session by typing your question into the chat icon on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. And for the best viewing experience, please shut down anything else you've got. And if in doubt, contact our help desk. So now please sit back and relax and enjoy the day.